right um so yeah i think the recording should start um thank you Demo Lash um, for reminding me about that. So let me share my screen. And um, I, I usually like to have an interactive session. So if you have a clarification or a question, don't hesitate to ask. I think yeah, the best way we can learn is if we are both interacting new as a trainee and uh, uh, if we are open and we, there's, fl there's flowing communication, then we get the both of, world, of both worlds. So I'm sure you guys have this particular data set, or rather this particular Jupyter Notebook. If you don't, let me... I mean, it's, it's a continuation of the... Uh, it's a continuation of the notebook that you guys had yesterday. So I've just added my bit to the piece of an extension of what you guys had yesterday. Um, I live, okay, wrong. I need to close some of these things. Mm -hmm. I, I believe you guys talked about data cleaning, transforming, and extraction. So in this particular section, you're going to talk about data exploration. And what data exploration entails is an approach to analyzing a data set to summarize their main characteristics. Like what does data, what data do we have? What does this particular data and Let me move the folder. I just do it after, oh, I mean, somebody in the tutorial, in the stand up today say they rather have the, I have the uh, Jupyter Notebook and go on as as we follow them. So was it here? Okay. So Kevin. Okay, let me create a copy of this. the copy, then move this to to the weak one, right? Um. So yeah. Oh, there's another one over here. Uh, so this will be the copy. I'll just remain it, rename it to something else um, so that you can distinguish between the two. So I'm sure you, you all have access to the week one folder. Um, if you don't, just let me know in the, in the, in the chat box over there. And yeah, we'll add you later. So we'll remain this to Tuesday. Hmm. Ah, I'll just rename it to data exploration. Okay. Also, yeah, you should find it in this particular folder and it will contain what we are going through. I had somebody write a message. Ah, cool. So, yeah, um, data explore, exploration or EDA is an approach to analyzing data sets to summarize the main characteristics. Um, this is sort of telling us what information, we want to find out information about our particular data. We want to know what do we really have? Is our data good? Um, do we have good data? Do we have bad data? And because mainly, as I'm sure most of you know, or some of you know that um, we use data is the most powerful tool. And data itself has 
exceeded oil as a most valuable commodity. So having good data will definitely determine how good your model performs. It's going to, it can be the difference between how well your model performs or how bad your model performs or how, how accurate and that's what I'm looking for and um, lacking bias your data is. So you really have to analyze it and get insight from it so that you can know even which particular model to use. You can develop these particular insights um, that will be very crucial for you to coming up with a decision about the data that you have. Do you need more data? Can you work with the data that you have? What is the limitation of the model you can build with a particular data that you have? So we can use it to, you can use EDA I'll call it EDA from now on, but you can just, you can use either term, which is a detection of mistakes, outliers or abnormalities in the data. We can see maybe um, out mistakes. Um, some columns weren't really accepted, weren't really, um, they didn't have the full data. So for example, if, if we didn't have the value for, I think I've zoomed in, let me just zoom out a bit. Okay, um, so let's say for this particular row, um, the, this, the, I'm using the same data that you're using yesterday. So this is just the medication that somebody who has diabetes would be, would be, would be offered once they go to our, to our hospital. Um, sort of this like, I can't pronounce the name. Let me start, let me look for one that I can pronounce like insulin, right? So if, if we didn't have the values, if we didn't have information, or we didn't have data in this particular column, or the data that we had, they didn't live up to what we expected, then that means we can't use this particular column. Let's say if half of this column had like a value that maybe a number, which clearly it shouldn't occur because this is a categorical column or yeah, a, a categorical a variable. If you don't explore the data, you won't find these mistakes and these outliers and abnormalities in your data. It also helps us determine, okay? Uh, it also helps us determine relationships among the explanatory variables. Um, this, these are sort of, uh, you know, for, for machine learning, we have the target column and we have the, the X, basically the X and Y. The explanatory variables are the X. These are sort of the, the columns and the variables that are going to inform our model what you're going to tr train the model to learn and so that you can make a certain prediction or so that you can, yeah, so that you can make a certain prediction or so that you can come to a certain outcome. So assessing and determine that relationship among the variables so that you can, you can know which particular variables are important for your model and which particular variables you can drop. Um, for example, I don't know if we can, can do the same with this particular, okay. Let me see, let me see, let me see. All right, uh, like for example, these two particular procedures, these particular variables here, um, number of lab procedures and number of procedures. If these two have a certain um, relationship that they influence each, each other, we will not want to use them because they basically, this one of these particular column doesn't add information to the model. If, if uh, let me use, uh, as you can see, Fumbani is here. Um, let's say we are both variables. If I'm column A and he's column B, and we are saying the same thing, then you can just as easily drop one of us because we're not adding any insight to your model. We're not adding any information to your particular model. So that's what we mean by, by this, yeah, determine the relationship among the explanatory variables and assessing the relationships between the explanatory and the outcome variables. As I mentioned earlier, um, we have the X columns, these are the variables, yes, and we have the Y column, which is a target column. And we want to assess what particular, what particular information or how much information can this particular column. Um, uh, for example, if, if we wanted, if, if our target column was, we wanted to estimate how much um, a patient, had, a diabetic patient spent time in a hospital. And so time in hospital will be our particular column. Let's, this, this might be, um, let's say this signifies a day. So we can come here and say, how much information does the number of lab procedures give us to, with regards to time spent in hospital? So there are things and there are plots that we can do ourselves that will give us this particular information. And we can know 
what sort of information we are getting regards to this particular column and how it affects our target column. Okay, so any questions so far? Or anything that, yeah, that you want exp expounded further? Uh, so yeah, as we go forward, feel free to, to interrupt me and ask the questions again. Uh, so uh, we had the data earlier. I'm sure you guys had, have run this code and you have the, the clean data in, in that particular script or review if you can, if I don't think you can run this particular script because you don't have the data. And yeah, but this is a clean data where you guys have missed, have filled in the missing values um, and you've done all that, you've changed the column types, you've normalized, you've done the transformation and all that. So it just, this is a Panda function that just means copy that data into this particular data frame. And um, so we can get one that you can work with over here. Uh, so the first, um, we have to look at the types so that you can know which particular type our column is. Is it a categorical, is it numerical? Uh, so Panda says categorical, um, calls categorical variables objects. And we can see we have floats. We have floats and we have integers. So object just means it's a string. It's not a numerical value. And the first thing that you're going to tackle in this particular tutorial is called the univariate analysis. Um, this is analysis that is usually done on one particular column or one particular variable, where we want to, to explore and see how this one particular variable is, what is the data that we have inside, um, and what are, its, what are basically its characteristics. And um, we have the code here. It's going to be, it's provided in the, in the utility functions code. Um, so we have different plotting softwares. I'm sure, I don't know if you have interacted with some of them. And the one that I'm using for this particular, for this particular tutorial is called Seaborn, but you have multiple. This is sort of an extension of Matplotlib. And it offers us more, more diversity and we can, we can print prettier, excuse me, we can print prettier, prettier plots with it. Uh, you can also use others, there's Bokeh, there's Plotly, so feel free to explore the various plotting software that you, plotting libraries that we have. And yeah, and you can use them later. And you, as you can see, we have them in methods and in functions. This just makes it easier for us. Instead of writing this particular code every single time, we we'll just call the function and that is going to plot the plot for us any time that we need. Uh, so we want to look at the distribution, right? Of the uh, number of, of the number of lab procedures in this particular data that we have. And we can see after plotting them, um, a, a histogram basically plots um, the data that we have, the number of the variables that we have from zero to 120, and it counts them, how many they are. And you can see here, I think this is maybe one or something. So we can see that in our particular number of lab procedures column, we sort of have a normal distribution, a Gaussian distribution. But if you come and look at the end tail here, you can see it's not like mainly centered. If it was ideally centered, um, you see the highest value is, is 120 or fair about. So the, the a normal distribution or a Gaussian distribution would have, um, would have had a peak at around 60. So this one sort of have, has a positive skew where it's leaning on one particular side and we have this particular tail that extends to the right side. So we do, this is basically, it just plots uh, the histogram, um, the count, basically the count versus the particular value. And we can see we have this other, other column called the number of medication. And this particular number of medication, this, now this, this is more evident from our particular data. Um, and we can see that it's really re leaning on the on the left side and the tail extends toward the right. Uh, so what skewness means is, um, you know, there are the, there's a mid, there's a median, there's a mode, and there's a mean. And you can do a describe, a describe function. This is part of the Python library that sort of illustrates this particular thing for you. Um, so we have the mean, which is around 16.02, right? And we have, this is a percentile. Um, do, you guys know, do you guys know what percentiles are? Um, so a percentile is sort of a percentage in a way that says for the 25 percentile means that every single single value in this particular in this particular 
this particular column are either in so that's what a percentile means. So if we go to an, another example, 50th, 50th percentile, this is like, um, what is the median value in our data set? And we can see that um, most of the values or this particular column are equal to 15. Or oh, that is 50% of the values in this particular column are less than or equal to 15. And we have the 75 percentile, which means that 75 percent of the data in this particular column is less than 20 or equal to 20. We can see the max value is 81. So we can see that we have about um, 25 percent of the data, which is above 20. And I mean, that, that's where we get this particular distribution. So most of our data, most of our data occurs from this particular 20 point going upside here. And since um, our median and our um, our median, our mean and our mode, our mode is the, the most occurring value, which I guess uh, we, it's not really clearly labeled, but I guess it's around 15, uh, 14. That's why we have the peak that sort of shifts um, further away from the median and the mode. And okay, that, that is, uh, we, they are you doing type of analysis. We can do it in two ways. And that involves plotting graphs, as we've shown you here, and in a numerical way, um, sort of what I've illustrated here. And this is this is just basically the statistic parts that gives us the insight about the particular data. And then we go to the next section. The next section is about outliers. Um, so let's start with a box plot. This particular plot, as you can see here, it's called a box plot. And the definition of a box plot um, some some explanation about the box plot. As you can see, this particular box in the middle, here the, the one that you have here, um, illustrates um, it's, it shows the middle fifty percent of the data. So most of our data falls in this particular column. Time in hospital falls between fifty percent of our data falls between two and six, and this particular limit here, like the edge of the box or the vertice, the vertice of the box here, this particular line here. And this other particular line here, this illustrate the the third and the first percentile. So if okay, let me I think the code has been run right. So we can do keep a okay. Let's just do that here. We can do df xp right. Then time in hospital. No. Yeah, we can see that you have a mean of four, and the twenty fifth, uh, the twenty five percentile is two, and yeah, the that the Q three or the that percentile is seventy five percent, which are, which is a six, and one out here in this particular edge, you can see that it lies at a six and a two. So this basically shows. This is what this is how you get the box in the box plot. It shows us the data that is in between the Q1 and the Q3, which is our first and the third percentile. As you can see, as is illustrated here, Q1, Q2, and then the line in the middle here shows the median. This is a middle value, so that should be around four. And we come here, we can see that the line is drawn at around four. Yeah. So what, once we come to this particular edge. Yeah, the whiskers, they're called the whiskers here. So there are two ways of cal calculating the whiskers. The whiskers is, you can either calculate it by saying this is the max or the, the max or the mean value uh, in this particular data set. But most of the time that's not the best way to calculate it because here in this particular box plot, we want to find out and the whisker shows the maximum value and the other whisker shows the minimum value, then we won't going to get, we're not going to get any outliers. Um, I think I should have identified what outliers are. So outliers are data that don't really fall in the range of majority of the data, in a sense. Like um, in this particular plot we had here for the distribution number of medications, we can say that anything, this is this is just for explanation's sake. There's no 
I'm, I'm not basing any mathematical formula on this. We can say that any any value past around 50% of past 50 is, is, is an outlier because it doesn't fall in our particular range. But how we identify them is using this particular plot here. And the whiskers themselves can be calculated using the third quartile or the percentile, the third percentile, which is Q3, in our case, six, was it? Six plus 1.5 minus the inter, inter quintile range. This basically means um, this IQR is Q3 minus Q1. You can see as this particular plot illustrates it. So the value from uh, Q3 and Q1 is that. Let's get this and then come back here. So this particular value, so I, um, this is a minimum value, zero. So this one should be 1.5 multiplied by four. And then we add it to six, which is sort of six, right? Um, let me, I don't know, oh, there's Google actually. So we can do 1.5. Mm -hmm. So this is six minus two, which is four. I think I think it gives us six <laughs> if I'm not wrong. Um, if my math teaching, yeah, um, if I got this wrong, then <laughs> that would have been really awkward. Um, so our uh, plus six, so this gets to twelve, and you can see that we have these two particular values here, which might be thirteen and fourteen that are outside our percent our, our particular calculation. So we can name these two values as outliers. Uh, so the same happens for the number of lab procedures and now the box plot does this for us automatically so that you can see so that we don't have to do the math by ourselves and the data is going to be huge so you can't keep on counting every single value so the plot sort of illustrates this for us you know, so we have the same box plot here and the outliers that you can see this one i think the value is around 35 so any value above 35 is outside the norm Okay. Ah, so we have different methods of fixing outliers. Um, and these methods of fixing outliers sort of um they, they resemble the same thing that you do when you're when you're dealing with missing data. So let's go back to the utility functions. And here, yeah, you can see this is a code that fixes the the function that fixes the outliers, and for this one for this particular value um for how, how we decided to define our outliers or what particular values to replace because we still want to have that particular integrity in the, the 95th percent um the 95th. basically this means um this particular section of the code here okay, means for this particular column this variable that has been passed in here um find the quanta the quantile which is also similar to the percentile of 0 0.95 basically get the 50 95th percentile get that particular value and if the value in the column here is greater than this particular value then replace that value with the median of the column so yeah you can do this with different values you can use mean you can use mode uh, but preferably use medium. So once you do that, you can see, let's back to our plot. Okay, here we go. Yeah, once we've done the fixed outlier of the number of medication, or the number of medications column, we can see once we plot the box plot, um, we really don't have, we don't have any, we don't have any outliers. And you can see that these particular values uh, fall inside the ranges that we have set for ourselves. Um, yeah, and if we do, if we do the describe, we can see that the mean, um, the mean, the mean, which is fourteen point nine five, um, and the and the median, which is also fifteen, and the mode, which is also fifteen here, um, sort of um, lie in the same value or are similar in in size to to a, to a certain value, and we can see that the distribution of our particular plot, uh, of our particular no number, also the column was called fixed number of medication. Um, the distribution of our particular number of medication, what was it? It was here, right? It had the skewness and it goes to the left. We can see that we've sort of fixed this and it has a normal distribution. The plot shows, yeah, it goes and gets picks around the mean and the height. Uh, but because we added the value so much 
uh, so many values were above that particular 75 percentile. You can see that every value above 35 or so, give or take, no, it's not 35, any value around 32, give or take, was replaced with 15. That's why 15 is abnormally large. Yeah. But now you know how to fix um, outliers and how to visualize that particular information. Uh, now we go to the categorical variables. The categorical variables are these. These are the columns that contain um, lists and not really numerical values, not really values that you can input into, into a machine learning model. So we are also have to deal with them in a certain sense. And this involves, yeah, plotting account plot. Basically, account plot is a histogram um, for, <laughs> it's a histogram for, uh, for variables that are strings and all that. And we can see that here in our particular data set, the Caucasian um, has the highest number of counts, which is about, which is about 80,000. And we have the African-American next and the other races. I think somebody unmuted themselves. Oh, okay, you can see. What exactly, uh, UL, can you unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Uh, okay, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, okay, uh, so what exactly that the box plot uh, graph tells us? Uh, does it? Yeah, come again. I think you got caught off a bit at the end. Um, so just to answer the first bit of your question, um, the box plot tells us, or rather shows us if you have any outliers in the data. This is just a quick way of figuring, of figuring out whether you have outliers in your particular column. You can see between the two, after we've replaced, you can see that once we look at this particular plot, there's no value extending outside this particular whisker. Right? So yeah, but if we come to this one that the, that we hadn't fixed the outliers, we can see all these particular values that get out of the, this particular whisker. So we know that our column has many outliers and we have to deal with them. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you very much. Cool. Um, Jakinda, I'll watch. Yeah, ask your question. No, I, I was answering uh, from oh, Chai okay. when you was asking about the box that Ah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and yeah. If, if if you feel you can answer the question, feel free to write it in the in the in the message board here, and I'll come and confirm whether it's right or not. Okay. And so we. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, um, the the categorical variable this is just a count, where we can see African Americans are around twenty thousand. Um, the Asians are you know maybe 5,000 or 2,000, and the Hispanic can be around 2,000 or 5,000. So we have the same distribution based of gender. And we see that the women are more than the male, which is around, I think, 55 Gs, and the males are around 48 or something. And then we get to the multivariate analysis. This is an analysis mainly done on one or no, on two or more columns where we look for relationships between the columns and how our data is distributed among these two particular columns. And we can we have multiple plots that can do this for us. We have the scatter plots and we have the box plots as well, uh, but I'll get to that later. Uh, so for the scatter plot, this, the, the scatter plot shows the relationship between um, two numerical variables. You cannot use um, one particular uh, a categorical column versus the other. It can be it can be any any sort of column. It can be the target column or the what are they called? The trainable columns, the explanatory variables, and you know, the outcome variable. So as long as they're numerical, you can plot this one against the other. And how we read this is um, we 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 look at the um, the right side and the upside. We can see that in this particular case, um, the sort of the values, um, like the baseline of the values increases. We can see here at at around zero to 20, um, number of lab procedures, we only have our little values and we, we which are around five and 10. 
uh, but once we get to the higher side um, from 80 onwards or from 60 onwards, we can see that the values we have, majority of them pass around this particular 15 mark. So we can say that as, as the number of procedures increases, um, we have more number of medication. And this, this is called a positive relationship where an increase in one results to an increase in the other. And that's what a scatter plot help us, help us um, grasp and visualize. And we can see here as, as we move on the data to other columns, we, I'll sort of um, just for, for the class purposes and to show you what we mean by positive and negative relations. I can just change the head here and we can see that, yeah, now the value of the data changes where or rather the, the data display sort of changes and we can see it's not really a positive relation or if there's a positive relation it's not really there we can see it sort of it remains constant throughout um like the values aren't increasing as much as we had seen earlier in the earlier plot and they are now sort of a stagnant where it doesn't really affect one number or the other we can see between 40 with um zero to five medication here and you also have some people here with 25 or more, but majority of them lie in this particular window from 20 to five. So we cannot really have a, a, de a definitive um, conclusion of the relations between these two particular values. And we can also see the same uh, for this. Um, you, you might get data that looks like this, and this is mainly because the data that we have is not continuous. Um, it's discrete it's hospital. We cannot have five days spent 2.5 days in the hospital or one for so we have sort of an upward trend that is sort of improved on the number of lab procedures. People or more, there sort of has this increased value. If the other way, where we have seizures in the first days here. And then it goes de de decreasing as you go on to the time in hospital. That is a negative relation. Um, and that's, that's a conclusion we come to that particular data. As if the number of lab procedures are high in this particular case, then the time spent in hospital will be lower. Okay. So, I don't want to see if you have any questions. So, no. Okay. Um, then we can go to the box plot. As we can see, this, the, the box plot here. It, it, this is just the same thing, was it? Uh, this is just the same thing, but instead of doing it for every single for every single column, uh, like for every single, uh, I mean for one particular column, for the number of major, sort of juxtapose it versus the value we have in gender. So we can see that the theme, um, or rather, um, women in this particular case had um, the we they had uh, this number of outliers in that particular data with regards to the male. I mean, both females and, and males have a certain number of outliers and I've already shown you how to fix them. And so this just shows us the how many outliers we have for each particular category. We can see in the unknown or invalid people, maybe people who, are, who don't identify as both male and female, um, don't have that many outliers. And, you know, so the last bit, that you're going to cover on today is called the pair plots. Uh, so the pair plot is also bits of the multivariant here, that a multivariate analysis. And this, this is sort of all of this combined, where in my particular case, I, I defined a data frame called pair, and I had these particular columns in them. So you can do this for, if you want to have a quick glance at the data. And this, this basically uh, plots, cutter plots against a lot of, uh, against all particular columns. So if you didn't specify the columns that you're going to use here, it's going to plot this cutter, this cutter plot or this pair plot for all of their data. And it gives us variable insight because it does a scatter, um, for example, by somebody having a question. Okay. All right, Blaze, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, hi. Uh, it's more just like a word of advice to what would you recommend? Because in cases you may find your data set has multiple covalents. I mean, like 
30 to 60 columns. And probably mm -hmm. you, you don't want to miss out on, let's say, finding some relationships between mm -hmm. columns. So we're like mm -hmm. doing the bivariate and the multivariate analysis. Is there like a way, a formula so that you can just focus on the ones that can actually give you, let's say, relationships? And just trying to do one against every column, one against each other column, which can be very time consuming. Ah, okay. Um, so for this particular case, we can do something similar, like the pair plot, like this, where this gives us uh, a representation of the whole data. But that that is going to be sort of um, you you won't be able to access it really well because you won't see certain values. You or the plot is going to look bad. So a rule of the thumb is sort of um, do analysis to the columns that you think are important. Um, for example, in this particular data set, we have, um, okay, we have this particular column. And we have the term in hospital, number of procedures and number of medications and number of patients. You can sort of say, um, this column seems to have more information than the others. That's basically the rule that you're supposed to be looking at when you're going to um, to do the plots themselves. You should ask yourself which which particular information is this particular column offering me? And is this particular column responsible or will it have an effect on the target column? For example, you can say if the target, if also the target column here was the time in hospital and we have the number of inpatients and the number of medications, we can say that the number of medications definitely has um, more, more information regarding the time in, in information rather than the age, right? You fix the age over here. So you can sort of, instead of going through, um, going going and doing analysis on the age column, you can sort of skip that and and focus on the other one, okay? Um, and, 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 and focus on the one that you feel has more information. And this is mainly going to depend also on the project that you're doing and what information and what you really want to get out of that particular project. I hope I've answered your question, right? Yes, you have. Thanks. Cool. And um, so, the melash. What will happen if we have more than one predictor variable? So, um, correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, but you mean if we have more than one? If we are pretty, if we have um, a, a a model that is predicting, let's say, like one or more things, right? Um, you can unmute yourself. If you care to explain your question even further. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Yes, he said yes. You, 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 you'll, you'll basically do the same thing. You can do this sort of analysis where you can specify two columns. I mean, using Seaborn. I don't know if, if I. Okay. Yes. Um, let's let let's look at this particular plot in in more detail, right? Um, we have this scatter plot, right? We have the data frame that goes inside here. I did head just for time and to illustrate a point. We have the X column and you have the Y column. And you can see here we have the hue. The hue is a race. Uh, this is sort of the color. And we have the here Caucasian, we have Asians and we have other, we have Hispanic and such. And for the style, we have race also. But you can see once we, once I change this into gender, Let's see how the plot runs. Once I change this into female, the females have been assigned a dot and the males have been assigned an X. Uh, so you can um, signifies, signifies female. So if you have that multiple predictor columns, you just have to plot the plots together. Uh, you, you, and you can do you can do one for each separately. You can do a plot for the first predictor variable, and you can do the plot for the second variable, or you can match them together and sort of have a conclusion of what on what. So in our case, if okay, it, it won't be the case, but it might be the case. We wanted to predict this. How okay? This this particular plot doesn't have interactions, but. Um, for one of the examples that I mentioned called Plotly Express, you can hide one particular value and look at how this particular column is affected, uh, this particular values affect that particular column in that particular predictor. 
and we can change maybe um we can turn off the color so that we can see how these two um number of medications and number of lab procedures are, are represented in the female or in the male group okay i hope i've answered your question right okay if, if i haven't answered your question then my last just write it there and okay say just so cool all right so we get back here to the pair plot um yeah we have the race the hue this is sort of the color that shows us which particular dots go where and you can see that um on the on the x on the y axis we have the time in hospital the number of procedures um number of lab procedures and the number of medications and on the on the x on the x axis we have the same time in hospital number of procedures and number of lab procedures so we know that um there's going to be a case where they overlap in this particular case like number of medications and number of medications and the best thing about this particular pair plot um or another word for it is a scatter matrix um we can we can decide what particular of diagonal we want um we can choose diagonal to be histograms and in our case here, I use KDE. What KDE means, it, it helps estimate the shape, or this is what we use to plot the distribution. And so as the distribution in this particular um, time in hospital versus, the first one was, oh yeah, time in hospital. It shows us the distribution of the time in hospital data um, for each particular race. As you can see now we can specify, if you don't want race, you can use gender. And if you don't have something, you can use something else. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the end of this particular tutorial. And if you have any question, please feel free to ask. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Um, who's speaking? Uh, not not yet. Oh, OK, cool. OK, so when we start this, uh, the whole process uh, with the data, yeah. our goal mm -hmm. was uh, to check the relationship between our two columns, right? Yeah. So what did, did we find from our exploration? Ah, so, <laughs> OK. Um, from our particular exploration, um, it depends. This is this was not, oh, for the pair plot, you mean? Or for the whole analysis? Yeah, for the whole analysis, since we are working on a new kind of data. I'm seeing all the graphs oh. and everything, but so what mm -hmm. do we conclude? What do we get from this process? Okay, uh, so um, well, one of the things that we've done in this particular plot, um, we fixed, um, we fixed the outliers. That, that, that was one of the well, one of the things that I've displayed here, and as an example. But for uh, for other particular columns, you can say I, I only did analysis on three three columns for the sake of time, and just so that you guys can get the concept. But if you do this for multiple columns you can decide which particular columns to to drop and to input in the particular in your model and you get a distribution of the data you can say that um there, there's something called but okay that, that's a different bit you can see the distribution of the data you can see if, if you wanted to have data that sort of um diabetes in in african americans and you wanted to do to build a model around that you can't use this particular data because most of it is Caucasian. Those insights are just explanation based on what you want to build on the model. This is just tools that are supposed to facilitate that. So if you had a, a certain end goal in mind, uh, uh, hospital, right? If our goal was to break somebody, somebody stays in, ho in hospital, we can get um, a distribution of the number of lab procedures, how the lab procedures are, and how they are skewed. Do we have people with a lot of lab procedures, or do we have people with little lab procedures? And this column seems to be important. So should we include it, or should we not include it? And we can go through it and say, um, look at this particular column. Is the value, is the value, is the data in this particular column valuable for us? Can we use this particular call, this particular data? for this particular model, or should we drop it? Basically, this insights, this particular thing is not supposed to uh, like have a tangible effect 
or it will it will have a tangible effect based on what columns you drop and what columns you have but having a goal that is uh, an, an illustration or a concrete goal let's say one particular outcome like the way we did 1.5 times 46 come rain come sunshine um this analysis is just supposed to give you insights and have you thinking about your data and how you can use your data um i hope i've answered your question right if i haven't let me know yes okay thank you mm -hmm. any any more questions or any other question All right, so I guess we don't have any questions. Um, if you do, feel free to reach out on Slack or on Rocket Chat, and myself and the team will get to you and we'll answer your questions. So yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely day for the rest, um, for the people who this is early and for the rest of us in East Africa, have a lovely afternoon. Okay, cool, bye.